Luke chapter 24. Let's read a couple verses to give you a thought. The Bible says in verse number 45, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. By the way, if he doesn't enlighten us, we'll never get it. Did you ever hear somebody say, Well, I just don't read the Bible because I don't understand it. Well, number one, you've got to know the author. He opened their eyes. And number two, you've got to wait on him to show you. He can show you all kinds of great things from this book. But if he don't do it, we're in trouble. In verse 46, he says, And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ. In other words, it was necessary for Christ to do what he's about ready to say. It behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. Verse 45, we find perception from Christ. Verse 46, we find the primary importance of Christ. Verse 47, we find the preaching of Christ. And verse number 48, we find the pers personal responsibility for Christ. We're all to be witnesses. All these verses are dealing with Christ. Here's my little thought. Without Christ. Did you ever think about what your life would be without Christ? No. Did you ever give thought where you might be had Christ not interrupted your life? Hmm? I'm looking around this crowd. Some of us are in hell. Hmm? I know some of your lifestyles before Christ entered in. You wouldn't have made it this far. Some of you, your families would be an absolute shamble. Some of you would have zero hope because you have nothing of this world right now. And if you didn't have Christ, you'd be in a mess. Hmm? Do you ever think about without Christ? Can I say without Christ, there would be no payment for our sins. The Bible said in Romans 5, 8, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Ephesians 1, 7, In whom we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, uh, according to the riches of his, of his grace. Uh, verse 46, it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins uh, should be preached in his name among the nations uh, beginning at Jerusalem. Can I say, well, we stand... Uh, on the blood of Jesus Christ. We preach the gospel here, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Uh, that is the good news. Uh, if you're a sinner today, there's some good news. You don't have to die in your sin. You don't have to die and go to hell. Uh, you deserve to die in your sins. Uh, you deserve to die and go to hell, but you don't have to because one day Christ came uh, knowing that's where he was headed uh, and he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again under his own power uh, uh, to prove that he was God. Uh, and he said, uh, if we'd come unto him and call on his name and believe on him, uh, he'd save us from our sins. Uh, without Christ, there'd be no payment for our sins. Uh, you can repent and turn from your sins and walk out of here clean. Walk out of here washed, white as wool. Without Christ, there'd be no payment for sins. Without Christ, there'd be no personal relationship with God. A lot of folks in their testimony started talking about what God had done for them, how God had blessed them, how they talked to God, how God met their need, uh, what God's doing in their life. Uh, without Christ, there would be no testimonies. Amen. We'd have no personal relationship with God. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. What a blessing uh, to be adopted into the family of God when we got born again. Uh, friend, what a blessing to be saved today. Without Christ, we wouldn't have that. We have no payment for our sins, no personal relationship with God. We'd have no peace of mind. Amen. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Not peace that the world have, my peace. Right. Amen. We live in an insane world. Sure. I just came from an area where it was very prevalent. The gospel is not, pre not being preached very much. You could see it on the citizens. 
The citizens had no conscience of God. You could see it in their lifestyles. You could see it in, in their actions. You could hear it in their voices. They didn't know anything about God. Therefore, they had no peace of mind. We live in a day and age where uh, uh, we can't build enough facilities that have people that have troubled minds. You know what their problem is? They need Jesus. Without Christ, there is no peace of mind. Listen, you can be saved and still be troubled in your mind. That's where the devil attacks you. But you can find peace in Jesus. Without Christ, we'd have no purpose for our lives. Miss Toey just talked about going to a woman's camp, and then she was privileged and blessed to be able to serve those women meals, and 68 people got saved. What a blessing. Uh, without Christ, we'd have no purpose for our lives. We just live, go home, get up, live, go home, get up, have no purpose, have no joy, have no hope, and then we die and go to hell. But being saved, our lives mean something. Right. We have a purpose for our lives. And I thought about this lastly in this little, little thought today. Without Christ, there'd be no escape from eternal punishment. Amen. John 3, 16, most people know this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But they don't ever get verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hmm? The world's already condemned. Amen. Jesus come to save us. To give us everlasting life. Why do we need everlasting life? Because without it there's everlasting punishment. Amen. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Matthew 25 verse 41 says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Verse 46 of Matthew 25, he says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. But the righteous into life eternal. Amen. Without Christ we can never be righteous. Amen. But through Christ we've been robed in his righteousness Amen. because he washed us from our sin. Amen. Maybe it's been a long time since you prayed because you don't know Christ. How long has it been? Maybe here today you're without Christ. You don't have to leave that way. You, had, you heard people testify with their own lips how God has helped them, how God has sustained them, how God has changed their life. Friend, that can be you. He can change your life. He loves you. He loves you so much he died for you. And he's willing to save you if you'd be willing to be saved. In a moment, going to have an invitation. That's just a big fancy word for the same thing. You get one in the mail to go somewhere. We're going to, we're going to give you an invitation to get to go to heaven. Amen. The only way you can get there is you've got to come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can be saved from your sins today. Your life can be changed today. You can be a new creature in Christ today. You can have joy unspeakable and full glory in your soul today. And you can have hope that you've never known by trusting in Christ. You may be here today and you may be saved but you're living far below the privileges of being saved because you're basing everything in your life about you and not basing your life on what Jesus has for you. He can make a profound impact in your life if you'll let him. I sure don't want to take one step without Christ. Amen. And being saved, I can't. How about you today? Are you saved? Maybe today you need to come and thank God there is Christ. That you do have the hope of glory. But I know one thing. Without Christ, without the resurrection of the Savior, Paul wrote, that we would be of all men most miserable. Amen. I'm glad I have joy. Yes, sir. I'm glad I have happiness in my soul. Oh, I don't have a perfect life, and neither do you, but I have a perfect Savior. Amen. And he's willing to help you this morning if you need help. But the Savior's a gentleman. Brother Clint, he's never forced himself on you. He's always just invited you to come. 
And every time you've come, he's helped you because that's who he is. And in a moment, he'll not force himself on you, but he'll bid you to come. And if you'll take that first step towards him, he'll help you take the rest. I sure wouldn't want to leave here without Christ. Let's all stand. Brother Daniel, you come. Brother Clint, come. Get a song. There's been a lot of good singing, a lot of good testimonies. Had a little thought about Christ. Is he speaking to your heart today? Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. I'll tell you this. All it takes to be saved is you've got to have a willingness to want to be saved. If you was out in an ocean, about ready to drown, and somebody threw you out a lifeline, and you wouldn't be willing to grab it and be pulled in, you wouldn't be saved. Today, the lifeline's been thrown out. His name is Jesus. And he'll save you if you'll come. They're picking out a song. Some have already come. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for this service. Thank you for those that minded the Lord. Now, Lord, it's the solemn part of the service. It's the invitation time. And I pray you'd put a hedge about us now. I pray you'd speak to hearts. Lord, I don't know anybody's heart here today. But, Lord, if there's somebody here without Christ, I pray they'd come. Give their heart and life to Jesus. Lord, if there's folks here today that know you, but they've just gotten cold, just drifted away from you, I pray they'd get back in fellowship with you. Lord, I pray if there's somebody hurting, Lord, they'd find help in the Savior today. Lord, help us not to, Lord, get all caught up in what you may or may not do. Help us to live by faith in what you're going to do. Help somebody today. God, that one that's on fire for you, just throw another log on their fire. Just have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.